Hey guys, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. I'm Zeth, and today I'm gonna show you how to change a rotor bell on an SX80. It's not as bad as you think it is. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we need to slow the rotor speed all the way down um, so we can open up the, the shivs on the driven or on the drive and then the driven is gonna be closed. So we're gonna go ahead and kick the separator on. Low idle. And then I'm gonna slow this rotor all the way down. all the hydraulic pressure off the, the cylinder on the separator drive. Okay, so what I was doing was I was taking the hydraulic pressure off this cylinder right here so I could open up these shivs right here and once these are all the way open then we can come in here and loosen our gear case and rotate it over so we can get this rotor belt rolled off. Um, on this is a final tier 4 combine and we have this um, air pipe in the way I don't think it's gonna make it through that gap right here, so I'm gonna loosen this pipe and get it out of the way before I go up in there. So I like to use a, a 3 8 swivel impact socket on these hose clamps. It just works perfectly, you can get it at any angle. room. Now we got to take the hydraulic hose off the end of the cylinder. Let's pull that out of the way. Okay, now we're behind the engine looking straight down on the rotor torque sensing unit. And here we have a turnbuckle. So we need to loosen this jam nut. And then there's four bolts on the gear case. If you can see them or not. Yeah, here, there, and there. And this gear case is slotted. And what we're gonna do is loosen, I like to mark where that gear case is with the marker. So when we go back, we can go back to the mark it was. 
So we're gonna mark it, loosen the four bolts around the gear case, and then we're gonna take this turnbuckle and we're gonna use it to shove the gear case this way, which is going to help loosen our belt. So I've got one more bolt to get out. This angle, you can see it a little better, how these bolts are slotted. And those bolts are 24 millimeter, and I like to use a, a long handled snap-on ratchet to get onto them so you can reach them and you got the leverage to break them loose. Okay, so now I got my gear case marked where it was. I can start cranking on this turnbuckle here to extend this rod and it's going to shut the gear case towards the left side of the machine. So you can see how far I had to crank that down to get those to move all the way in their slots and I worked up quite the lather. That thing was pretty stiff. I think I'm gonna lube up those threads before I go back um, to tighten it again. But now we gotta get this belt started, pried off the shiv and then we'll rotate it and roll it off. So if you can get your pry bar underneath of it like this, then you can start prying this guy off. I'm not saying it's easy. I mean, it's really hard to do one-handed. One moment. Okay. So once you get it like that, then you can just take your feet and roll your shift. Oh, easy now. Roll it off. Now that belt's rolled off there. Now we're gonna gotta get it out around the drive and then she'll be out. I wanted you guys to see what size of hole I was dealing with. Basically, I get your body down in there. And there's not a lot of clearance, and that hose right there is in a bad spot. But I'm six foot four, and I can get in there and do it. So if I can do it, just about anybody can. But if a John Deere engineer had to go in here and replace this belt with this shield and this hose right in his side, I think he might have uh, done something different there. All right, now that we got it worked out to the left side, now what comes the tricky part is you got to kind of shove in on this shiv to get more clearance between the frame in here because then we gotta twist this belt to get it through here up and around and out Yahtzee. So here's why it's changing this rotor belt here. You can see it's starting to split, but look at that. So she split all the way through the, the backing to the backing right here. So I don't think that was gonna run very long. Now we got our new belt. We're gonna try to feed in here. Thank you. 
in here. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we got the belt started. What you want to do is kind of get it started in this pulley and wedge it down in there. And then I'm going to step on this and I'm going to roll it. And it should s slap right into this pulley here once I roll it. Here I'm standing on it, using my foot to force it in. She's being stiff. If it won't go, you can also get a pry bar in the shivs and help pry it in. So right here, there's little holes. You can actually stick a big pry bar in. You can use this to help roll it on. Even with the pry bar in there, I still couldn't get it rolled over. So I got it started enough. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull down on this chopper bell and turn the whole machine over. And hopefully turning this shift here, it'll go ahead and roll that on the rest of the way. on there you little rascal so you want to tighten this turnbuckle until it gets really really tight and then you can put your foot on the bottom of the rotor belt and push down in it and force this belt down in this this spring-loaded torque sensing unit and then this will turn a lot easier
Okay, 73 years later, I finally got that. Ran all the way to where my marks are lining up on my deer case down here. And now I'm gonna tighten the four bolts on the gear case. All right, so we're done up top. We got the rotor belt on, we got it adjusted. And like I said, I put the gear case exactly back where it was from factory. But if you wanna get technical, if you, wasn't, if you weren't sure if it was in the right position, you can always tighten that belt until you have an eight millimeter gap in between your shivs up there on the, the driven shivs on the rotor. So you just keep, you could turn the belt and keep tightening that turnbuckle and pushing down with your foot to make sure that that belt's getting pushed down in that driven shiv and then rotate it a few times and then check your gap and you should have a eight millimeter gap in between your shivs. Then you know you're exactly correct. But I know this one's never been messed with before. It's in the factory position. So if I just put the, the gear case back where it originally was, we should be good to go. Now all we gotta do is put this air pipe back on and put the hydraulic hose on and this job is done. Now all we got left is to run the combine. I'm gonna jump up in the combine. I'm gonna let you guys watch this shiv go in and out. And I'm gonna make sure we got the correct speeds inside in the cab. So let's check it out. speeds are right on the money um, if you guys like this video please give me a like it helps me out tremendously and subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and uh, if you could comment below let me know what 
something you guys would like to see, what repairs you would like to see done, and I'll try to get that uh, video done for you guys. And uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Trilogy Farms here uh, for their business, and we appreciate everything you guys do. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.